everyone, I'm Jillian. Welcome to Real Life 101, the show where you'll get the inside scoop on real jobs, great career choices. You'll be glad you tuned in today when you see what we've lined up to show you. Did you know that one out of three dogs over the age of 10 will most likely develop cancer? Sean will meet a veterinary oncologist who diagnoses and treats pets with cancer. Then Gracie will talk to a man who makes his living as a freelance drummer. She especially enjoyed his drum solo. I think you will too. And if you're into reptiles, you won't want to miss Sean's interview with a zookeeper who takes care of them. Not sure I'd be comfortable getting as close to the gators as she does. Now stay tuned for some exciting and fascinating careers on today's episode of Real Life 101. We hear of people being diagnosed with cancer, but did you know that cancer is the number one cause of death in cats and dogs? Our pets are very much a part of our families, and learning that they have this disease is very difficult for owners to face. There's a specialty of veterinary medicine that is board certified to treat cancer in pets. Dr. David Lurie is a veterinary oncologist with affiliated veterinary specialists. He talked to Sean about his rewarding profession. What's up guys, today we're here with Dr. Lurie and you're a veterinarian oncologist, correct? Yeah. So what exactly does that mean? Well, in a nutshell, um, the discipline is broken down nowadays into three different disciplines. There's um, medical oncologists, radiation oncologists, and surgical oncologists. As you can appreciate, uh, cancer care both in people and animals is, uh, is multi-factorial. Uh, and uh, often involves multiple disciplines. So my area of training is both in the medical oncology field and the radiation oncology field. That's primarily what I'm doing day to day. Okay, now how did you get involved in this field? Um, a little bit serendipitously actually. I initially wanted to be a surgeon and uh, when I came out to the States to do my internship at the University of Illinois, uh, that was my intent. But I ended up meeting an oncologist at the uh, university out there who became a, a mentor of mine and really stimulated my interest in the field. Okay. Yeah. And how long did you, were you in school for? What kind of uh, education did you need to get? Um, well, m after my veterinary training, mm -hmm. um, it's a one-year internship, and then uh, I did two residencies. I did my medical oncology residency followed by a radiation oncology residency. Um, those were two years apiece. Nowadays, those programs have grown into three-year uh, disciplines for each of them. Now, if you had to choose one thing, or I mean, there's got to be a lot of things, so it might be a little hard to choose one thing, but what would you say is one of the most complex parts of your job? Um, the, the most technically complex part of what I do is, is radiation therapy planning. Okay. Um, you know, that involves a lot of uh, image interpretation and um, uh, some of the physics associated with it can be technically demanding. Um, I actually enjoy that. That's that's uh, one of the, the the parts of what I do that is, you know, intellectually stimulating for me. But it is more technically demanding. Uh, beyond that, I think it's the hours, um, you know, really, and and the emotional burden that that I deal with, you know, with distraught clients coming in. They've just often just received a diagnosis that is considered catastrophic for their pet many instances those are considered family members nowadays so you can imagine there's a lot of emotional distress and that a lot of times is transferred onto me mm -hmm. um, so that's hard from an emotional perspective what are some important qualities for your team members I think uh, you know someone who is clearly an animal lover you know that goes without saying because they're going to be uh, taking care of some of the sickest patients um, and trying to nurse them back to health. Someone with patience, someone who can communicate well, someone who is a little bit thick-skinned, you know, you have to have a little bit of that to, to work in these kinds of uh, environments. Um, and someone who's trustworthy, you know, I, I can't be everywhere all at once, so I do 
put a lot of trust in my technical staff to carry out you know, medical plans and orders as they are directed. Um, so those are the important qualities. Okay. And what would you say is the most exciting part of your job? I think the most exciting part is, is when a patient finishes up their treatment successfully. And uh, you know, we can see the, the full spectrum, it sort of comes full circle where the client has come in emotionally distraught, not knowing where to turn, being informed of their options and you know, that kind of information is power for them to make the right decisions for them and their family. But at the, at the end of that, seeing a successful outcome. Okay. And we do get those. We do get a lot of successful outcomes. That's always the most rewarding. Just today we had a, a patient who went through radiation for a tumor in his mouth about 18 months ago. It was his fourth birthday today. They came in and we had a birthday party oh, with wow. them. So, so that kind of thing is, is wonderful. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Larry, for taking time out to speak with me. It was a pleasure. So keep up the good work. I'm going to let your friends yeah. have you back. They're getting a little jealous back there. <laughs> All right. Well, All right. thank you. Definitely. Nice to meet you, Sean. Think you might like to become a veterinarian and treat animals with terminal diseases like cancer? Do well in your science and math classes in high school as the competition to get into veterinary school is very tough. Also volunteer or get a job at a veterinary hospital that treats pets with cancer. That way you can get some insight into the profession. Though the pathway to becoming a veterinary oncologist is long and difficult, the challenge and rewards of successfully treating a beloved family pet is a great payoff. For more information about becoming a veterinary medical or radiation oncologist, click on the link on today's episode synopsis at rl101.com.